Welcome to the Lake Research International E-Conference, a call for consensus on geoengineering in lakes. I'm the chair for session two, Advances in Material Development and Application Procedures. My name is Gang Tan, and I'm from Research Center for Eco-Environmental Sciences, Chinese Academy of Sciences at Beijing. The title of my introduction for the session is Lake Restoration and Eutrophication Control Through Manipulating Algal Blooms Institute. Eutrophication can cause harmful algal blooms and HAPS can cause sunlight and oxygen exchange blocked, dissolved oxygen depleted, toxin release, and massive fish and aquatic plants killing. It is well recognized that there are two alternative stable states in shallow lakes. Vegetation dominated stable state where nutrient levels are low and clarities are high and algae dominated state where nutrient levels are high and clarities are low. The shift between the two states is not reversible. It is easy for the lake to be deteriorated into the bad state, but more difficult to switch it back to the good state. Schaeffer and colleagues reported that the vegetation dominated states in Lake Meluwi collapsed as total phosphorus increased beyond 0.2 milligram per liter. To restore the vegetation dominated states, the total P must be reduced. However, the vegetation dominated state can only be restored at a much lower P level around 0.1 milligram per liter. This reduction of total P can be very slow in natural waters because of the memory effect of P in the sediment. Using geoengineering methods, the reduction of P level can be largely accelerated provided that the external load is under control. So far, several methods have been studied for the purpose of internal phosphorus control, such as the applications of aluminum, phospholog, modified clays, and the ferric salts, etc., which will be discussed in details by our invited speakers in this session. Most of these methods are following phosphorus chemistry and using chemicals directly. Further studies in this area should consider the key issues of cost, efficiency, ecological safety, integration of multiple principles, and sustainability of the method. To solve this bottleneck problem, breakthrough in technical principles is often critical. For instance, we can ask whether algae themselves can be used for pea control. Can the chemical, biological, and ecological principles be combined and conducted using natural materials? Is it possible to use natural force and materials so that the excess dissolved nutrients can be used for biodiversity and ecological restoration? There are two major sources of nutrients for lakes, external loads such as runoff and atmospheric deposition, and internal loads from sediment and suspended particulate phosphorus, including algae cells. Algae can absorb large amount of dissolved nutrients during the bloom, even when at low nutrient levels. If we can remove the algae cells from the water, and sink them down to the sediment and not to let them to be reused by the growth of algae anymore, then we may not only solve the problem of toxic algal bloom, but also make use of the valuable nutrient as a resource for the restoration of ecological system such as submerged vegetation. This idea has been studied in my group over the last 10 years and the modified local soil technology has been developed. The multifunctional principle of MLS technology is that after the local soil materials are modified by various non-chemical natural safe products, 
the MLS materials can be used in an ecologically safe way to achieve multiple functions. The first function is hat removal. By spraying the soil suspension onto the bloom, the soil particles can fluctuate and transfer the algae to gather the nutrients from the water to the sediment. Then, by applying a MLS capping materials, the flocks can be buried into the sediment without getting back to the water. The capping layer also contains native macrophyte seeds which can grow and utilize the nutrients that come from the decomposition of the buried algae flocks in the sediment in shallow water systems. The restoration of submerged vegetation cannot directly happen in heavily eutrophic systems, but it may be restored after the water and sediment environment are improved. The submerged vegetation can further maintain the water and the sediment quality in a sustainable way through the food web principle. Since we want to realize different functions using local soil as a carrier, we have to modify the soil particles using different principles. The goal is to switch the lake from algae dominated state to submerged vegetation dominated states. The principles used including flocculation to remove toxic algal blooms, oxygen nanobubble that are loaded onto the surface of soils or clays to degrade pollutants for the water quality improvement. And oxygen nanobubble modified capping materials to remediate the anoxic sediment and, and for internal load control. A capsuled seeding technique was used for the germination of submerged macrophyte seeds in stressed sediment environments. The general principle is to put algae and these nutrients into the food chain so that the nutrients may be reused for biodiversity and ecological restoration as a resource. Function one, algae removal. These are the photos cut from a video contest of a journal called ESMT. Small amount of chitosan modified soil suspension was added to this thick algal water and algae together with the nutrients can be separated from the water and sunk down to the bottom in a couple of minutes. The water quality can thus be quickly improved, which may in turn provide light conditions for the growth of submerged vegetation. Details of how and why local soils can be used to flocculate algae cells can be found from previous publications. Environmental friendly natural materials are used in all the soil modification methods in order to avoid any adverse effect of, chemi of using chemicals in natural water systems. This is a live demonstration under the witness of local government officials and expert panels in Lake Taihu in 2008 in a purposely constructed enclosure of 50,000 meters square. This is the effect uh, after 30 minutes when we finished the treatment. And this is the effect after one day. Six months later, submerged vegetation were partially restored. Another engineering application of MLS technology in Lake Taihu and its ecological impact on biodiversity was reported in this paper and in a video contest of ESMT, which can be found from this address. Function two is about the internal load control in the sediment. We developed the modified local soil capping materials which can provide a, a physical block to reduce resuspension of algae flocks. By using one centimeter thick chitosan modified sand capping layer, even on the constant stirring of 200 RPM, the algae flocks can be physically capped well without being mixed back to the water. 
the capping layer can also provide a chemical block to reduce phosphorus and nitrogen fluxes from the sediment. In the control and flocculation only systems, the sediment is a source of 2TOP. The source is reversed into a sink of 2TOP when MLS capping is used. As an overall effect, various nutrient fluxes, including nitrogen and phosphorus, can be reduced or reversed by using different capping methods. The reason for this is because the cap layer can provide a chemical barrier with much higher redox potential than the untreated sediment. We have studied the capping effect in the open lake of Meiliang Bay during the winter of 2010 at Lake Taihu, where, no, where only the sediment was treated, but not the open water. For the untreated lake sediment, there is a high peak of phosphate in the summer and autumn. This phosphate peak was largely removed by the capping treatment during the winter. The third function of MLS technology is the ecological restoration. This slide shows the comparison result in a simulated system in the laboratory. Seeds planted in agar waters were dyed because of the bad water, light, and sediment conditions. The bad conditions can be lifted by the MLS treatment, which lead to the successful growth of the submerged vegetation. This function was further tested in a whole pond experiment in 2012. This is the result 70 days after the treatment. The water transparency of the treated pond was largely improved than the control pond. Submerged vegetations were restored. These are the water quality parameters before and three months after the treatments. Not only the nutrients, but also other pollutant levels were continuously reduced, which may be due to the integrated effect of flocculation, manipulated sediment processes, and especially the restored submerged vegetation. This is the result in another test field in Lake Taihu. This is the result before the treatment, two hours after the treatment, and one day after the treatment. This is one year after the treatment for both the treated and untreated control ponds. In natural hab systems, anaerobic degradation of algae cells may result in greenhouse gas emission, such as methane. If the algae are used to feed the growth of submerged vegetation using MLS technology, the methane release may be reduced. Preliminary measurements indicated that both CH4 and CO2 fluxes across water-air interfaces can be reduced by different oxygen nanobubble modified local soil capping treatments. This may be related to the fact that redox potential in the sediment can be significantly manipulated due to the oxygen nanobubbles, which may greatly affect the microbial processes of the sediment. For general stories about nanobubbles, one can refer to this new scientist article where our nanobubble work is featured. Engineering facilities were developed for the application of MLS treatment at different scales. Our current study, including chemical and microbial conversion processes of capped algae flocks in the sediment and its impact to nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and toxin fluxes over the sediment water interfaces and air water interface many for nitrogen and carbon, short-term and long-term responses of MLS flocculation plus 
capping treatment at replicated whole pond scales. For this purpose, we are building long-term study fields containing laboratory, mesocosm, and pond experimental systems in Turtian Reservoir, which is 250 kilometers west of Beijing. With this facility, we can study the effect of various geoengineering methods at laboratory, mesocosm, and pond scales in a repli replicated way, which can also be tested in open water. Here, I warmly welcome Lake Geoengineering colleagues to collaborate for various experiments using this facility. Here in session two, to introduce the major advances in material development and application procedures in Lake Geoengineering, we have invited Professor David Hamilton from New Zealand, Dr. Brian Spears from UK, and Dr. Grant Douglas from Australia to give us plenary presentations on their pioneer topics. I believe their talk can stimulate active discussions and bring valuable insights into future studies. Please feel free to drop your comments in the discussion area so that we can consider your views or comments. With this, I would like to thank you for part particip participating in the discussion. Thank you for your attention.